Well, good morning, everybody. It is Sunday morning, and I am back in the country. As many of you know, I have been uh, in Greece for the last uh, 11 days, 12 days. <clears throat> Hang on, I got to turn off my headset. Had my uh, seen a headset on. Anyway, I was out of the country for about 11 or 12 days on a uh, media assignment for Silver Sea Cruises and my other website, cruisereport.com. Any of you who are interested in cruising, check it out. I did daily blogs from the ship. I have not been able to do any videos yet because for those of you that have ever been on a cruise ship, you know that the Wi-Fi is not very good. Internet connections are pretty slow. They're good for checking email. I can even do my blog uh, through Squarespace, but as far as you know, video streaming or uploading, downloading video content, you really can't do something that elaborate. So I'm back. I want to thank all of you. If you're new to the channel, uh, we pretty much talk about motorcycle stuff here, but I get off on tangents occasionally. While I was out of the country, I did release a couple of videos that I had produced before I left town. Uh, the most recent one was my crown and comments and I uh, got a lot of really good responses from that. Those videos are starting to get more and more popular, but uh, they're still not huge, but they, they, they do okay. And I really appreciate all of you who uh, supported the channel while I was out of town. As the cruise industry starts coming back, it could be a very busy year for me for my other website. We're basically trying to rebuild it from the ground up because uh, we pretty much lost everything during the pandemic. We lost all of our revenue and uh, basically starting over from scratch. So, thanks for supporting this channel, which has helped to uh, kind of sustain us through the pandemic. I have two passions. One is riding motorcycles, which is what we're doing now and talking about. And the other one is cruise travel. And so, uh, I, I am fortunate enough to have two websites and two YouTube channels that deal with my passion of both of those, uh, or I should say, to deal with both of those passions. And welcome to my passion. If you like motorcycle stuff, this is the place to be. Please click the subscribe button down below. Now, while I was out of the country, I got an email from one of the tech support guys at Cena, who informed me that he's sending me a firmware update to test on the uh, Cena Spider ST1. You remember I did a review of that headset uh, a few weeks ago and never could get it to pair reliably to the Goldwing. And I kind of put out a video warning anybody, don't, if you have a Goldwing anyway, if you ride a Goldwing, don't buy it because it's not going to be able to pair to the Goldwing. I tried everything. Well, apparently they have updated the firmware and I will uh, do my best to get that downloaded uh, either today or tomorrow and get it installed and do a new round of testing and see uh, how it uh, develops. If there are any developments and it's any better than it was before, if I'm able to get it to pair, I'll let you know soon. Um, I'm hopeful. I, I would love for that uh, new Spider ST1 to work because it's a lower cost headset option. And what they've done, basically, and I should clarify some statements I made in my previous video. What 
Cena has done is removed the ability for the headset to communicate with other headsets via Bluetooth. It only communicates with other headsets using mesh technology, their own proprietary uh, mesh 2.0 technology. It still has Bluetooth capability because it still connects to your mobile phone using Bluetooth and it still connects to your Goldwing using Bluetooth and it can still connect to your GPS, your external GPS like in my case the Garmin using Bluetooth and I was able to successfully get it to pair to the Garmin I didn't have any problem with that I just couldn't get it to pair to the Goldwing I didn't have any trouble getting it to pair to my iPhone paired fine it just would not compare, uh, I'm sorry, pair to the Goldwing. So hopefully a firmware update has addressed this issue and we can now, uh, we'll find out in a day or two, a few days, if uh, we can get that ST1 Spider. Problem is now I gotta, I gotta uninstall the 50S, take it all off and reinstall, but it, that only takes about 10 minutes. I've, I've taken these headsets on and off and the speakers so many times. I'm, I, I've got it down to about five minutes, five or 10 minutes to do it. So it's really not that tough. At least on these HJC helmets, it's pretty easy. You just pop out the cheek pads, pop out the headliner, and uh, doesn't take long. What they did do on the Spider, I think I may have mentioned this in my review video, is they've changed the mounting system. It no longer mounts to the helmet using the, uh, oh, I guess I should say the traditional Cena mount where the headset clips into the, uh, into the, the mount. It, it, the whole mounting system is a clip-on device. You can remove the headset, but you have to disconnect the wires. To do it so um, I think I covered that in my review video I'm pretty sure so hopefully uh, I'll be able to get you more information I've got a couple of other product uh, review videos and some tips and trick videos coming up in the next week or so now that I'm back in the country for a while uh, we don't have anything planned in August right now as far as the cruise travel goes but in September uh, we will be going to Alaska for a week and uh, that should be fun it's like a little small ship experience in Alaska and that should be a, a fun trip apparently it's been hot here while I was gone apparently got up into the three digits it's beautiful right now it's only 83 degrees I think it's gonna get up to 98 or 99 today still not gonna break that 100 degree mark so I have yet to personally experience a 100 degree plus day here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area because it never got above 99 degrees while, while we were in town. Now I think while we were out of the country it may have, but uh, we didn't see it. So still waiting for the uh, super hot weather to come and it's the middle, almost the middle of July. So you'd think by now we would have been well into the 100 plus degree days. I hate it when these people water their lawns and it gets water in the street. There's always water right there when I'm coming back home and I always have to change lanes to avoid the water because, you know, I know some of you guys are not big on washing your motorcycles. I like to keep my bike pretty clean. And so if I can avoid going through standing water on the street, I do so at all costs. So it really irritates me when these sprinkler systems stay on overnight and the runoff gets into the street. Uh, we, I have a problem in front of my house where, the, where the, uh, there's a low spot in the street and water, we get standing water there and the city won't fix it. And when I'm trying to work in the garage in the summertime and shoot videos, I'm constantly being bothered by mosquitoes. So not only is it annoying, but it's potentially a health hazard, but the city doesn't care. They've, came, they've come out and looked at it. They've looked at it a couple of times. They said, yeah, it's just not a priority. 
Another thing, while we were in Greece, I'll just throw this out just to spur a little conversation because I know some of you have been without my wit and wisdom over the last 10 days, 12 days. All this BS you hear on the news about how Europe is leading the way with social distancing and all this kind of stuff and masks and and America is behind the times and we got to catch up with the European that is complete BS we were in Greece for 12 uh, 10 days at least and everywhere we went if you're outside in a city people are walking around with no masks there's no social distancing now when you go indoors people do wear masks but when you when you're outdoors walking around nobody's wearing a mask and at the Athens Airport I have never seen crowds that large in my life at an airport there were thousands of people standing shoulder to shoulder in line you know waiting to get their tickets it was a nightmare getting home it uh, our flight was two hours delayed leaving Athens we didn't get home last night till 1 a.m. and uh, you know I don't know if it's Delta's fault or I, I know that they had two big flights, two big airplanes leaving or near the same time. They were trying to get people checked in at the ticket counter. And you can't check in online anymore because of COVID. They have to check your vaccination in person. So that slows everything down. Used to be you go check in online, you get your boarding pass on your phone, or you could print it out and take it to the airport. Oh, hell no. Now you got all these forms you got to fill out. You got COVID vaccine if you do not have a covid vaccine don't even attempt to travel you're just wasting your time we had to have three covid tests on this cruise we went on we had to get one before we boarded the ship we had to have one during the cruise and we had to have one at the end of the cruise before we could fly home the united states would not allow us back into the country unless we had a negative covid test that's my story that was my travel story I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to know more about our trip to Greece, let me know in the comments and I'll rant on about that somewhat. Uh, we did have a great time, actually. It was a wonderful trip. Beautiful cruise ship, beautiful cruise. Um, check out my cruise channel if you want to know more about that. But uh, hey, if you're interested, I'll talk about anything. Just let me know in the comments down below. So that's it. I'm back home. And I will see you on the next Cruise Man's Motor Vlogs. Thanks, guys.